guys, this is Josh with the Update Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing how to prime your fuel and oil system after a rebuild or after a long amount of storage or after a major repair. And we're going to start by doing the fuel system here. And before we do that, you can notice that I'm doing a rebuild on this engine, one of the broken piston ring in the previous video, haven't installed the injectors or the fuel lines yet. Just wanted to show you that this is an actual rebuild. And this is a few hours later. I've installed the injectors, I've installed the fuel lines to and from the head, but I have disconnected the fuel return line at the filter housing. Now, we're going to be using the hand priming pump here a little bit, but not as much as you'd think because it takes forever. Now, I've installed fuel water separator and the secondary fuel filter, but I only installed them dry. I only lubricated the seals to them. I didn't put any fuel in them. Just showing you here that I've installed the injectors and the overhead and the lines. And if you're wondering how the fuel system works, basically fuel is pulled from the fuel water separator after the tank. It then goes to your fuel transfer pump and it's pressurized after that point. It's then pushed into the secondary fuel filter. It then goes into the front of the head, out of the back of the head, and then back to the tank. Now we could use the hand priming pump here, but it would take forever and be very annoying. So what we're gonna be doing is pulling a vacuum throughout the system, throughout the cylinder head, actually throughout the entire system, and we're gonna pull fuel here. Now you have to pull it on the return side, and you wanna pull it before the pressure regulating valve, which is right there, because if you go to this line, which goes back to the tank, you won't be able to pull it through the pressure regulator. So I've hooked up this little line that's going to hook to a brake bleeder, and then we're gonna finish it off with the hand priming pump. So I've done this on several engines, and I've actually been able to crank the engine the first time after a rebuild and it starts immediately. Now, you don't just wanna do this on the fuel side and not do it on the oil side because if it starts immediately and doesn't build oil pressure right away, it's not great. So what we're doing here is we're just pulling a vacuum. Now, what does that do? Well, by removing all the air out of the system, you are going to be forcing the fuel from the tank at about 13 to 14 PSI through the filters, through the cylinder head, and then into our little vacuum system here. Now why that pressure? Because by pulling a vacuum, you're actually, there's no negative vacuum. You're actually just removing the air, and then the atmospheric pressure around us is pushing down on the fuel in the tank and then going to force it through the system. Now why not just pre-fill the filters and then just start the engine? Well, you have to remember that the cylinder head is the highest point in the fuel system. And if you just pre-fill the filters and then crank away, fuel is gonna have a hard time purging all the air out of that cylinder head. So by doing this, you are forcing fuel throughout the filters, throughout the cylinder head. Not only that, you're also pushing it or pulling it through all of the little ports in the injectors and through all the little ports in the filter housings and the lines themselves. Not only that, we're going to be pulling about 20 ounces of fuel out of the system, which will clean out any dirt, any oils, or anything in the system while we do that. Now, you can see there, fuel is starting to come out of the system. This is about a minute in after pulling a vacuum. It doesn't pull at very high volume, but all the fuel it's going to be pulling out there is going to be through both filters, and it's going to help displace any air in the system. Now, once it starts pulling fuel, it doesn't take very long. It takes less than a minute and the whole system is primed. So what we're gonna be watching here is you can see our little canisters have eh, probably about 10, 12 ounces in it. And you can actually stop pulling a vacuum and it will keep pulling a vacuum until all of the empty space, not air, empty space is displaced. And what we're gonna do is once it starts getting close to full, the little canister here, we're going to stop pulling a vacuum, and what that's gonna do is let the pressures equalize. You don't wanna disconnect it while it's under a vacuum because then it'll suck air back in the system. So, what we're gonna do now is disconnect the line going between my little suction line and the actual fuel return line. Uh, sorry about that. Gonna set it back up there. Just gonna grab my wrench, disconnect the fuel line here. And when you disconnect it, you wanna try and disconnect it at a high point. Remember the fuel is heavier than air. So if you disconnect the line at a low point, you're gonna get more air back into the system and more fuel leakage out of the system. So we wanna minimize the time that the connector is below the cylinder head. 
So we can see it's pretty high up. It's about higher than the injector point in the cylinder header close to it. Once it is disconnected, you're going to quickly thread it back on. Now some air is going to get back in the system because you are not Sonic the Hedgehog. You can't just go super speed and get this thing connected before any air is pulled in the system. Now I've been using these Nipex, or some people say it Knipex or Kynipex. Uh, plier wrenches are really good uh, in place of a crescent wrench I've found. I like them more than a crescent wrench. And uh, I'll put a link in the description. You guys want to help the channel, just click on the link. Anyway, we're going to connect that line there, which is our supply line now. Now the entire system is sealed. And it's only going to have a little bit of air left in it, but all the injectors, everything should be full of fuel. So now's the point where we're going to use our hand priming pump. And you should only take a couple pumps. Probably three or four before we actually get a full hand priming pump full of fuel. Now once it gets very difficult to push, that means it is full of a liquid, which is fuel. And once you push it through the regulator a couple times, which is when it's super hard to push, you know that the entire system is pretty much primed. Now is there any air in the system? There might be a very little amount, but there's always a very little amount. If you've ever seen an engine running with a clear line, it's always sucking a small amount of air. Now remember that the cylinder head is the highest point in the fuel system, so if you don't do this, it's going to be a hard time getting it fully purged of air. Now it's time for a lubrication system. Now I've installed oil on the bearings that I installed, but I haven't installed oil in the engine. The oil pan's on, the oil pump's on. I even installed the oil filter, but I did not put oil in the oil filter because I knew I would be hand priming it this way. See, there's our nice painted oil pan now if you are not going to prime it i do recommend pre-filling the oil filter after a rebuild just because there's all there's no oil in the system anymore and always pre-fill from the dirty side if you can which of course you can so what we're going to be doing is going to push oil throughout the turbochargers the bearings the gears the head the rocker arms the valve train Basically like the engine's running, except it's not running. And what we're going to do is you can plumb in pressurized oil here at the oil filter or oil pressure sensor or this little port, which is also in the main oil gallery. Or the easiest way I've found typically is this, the air compressor oil supply line. RT at work showed me that this is actually an easier place to plumb into. So we're just going to disconnect that line. And then I'm using our oil fill system here here which is kind of cheating because most people don't have this but this system builds a couple psi of pressure and what it'll allow us to do is push oil into the main oil gallery and this is quartz not gallons folks so don't freak out and what it's going to do is it's actually going to push oil everywhere throughout the engine that oil is supplied to so you can actually see our iva housings are purging with oil it's going to push all the old oil out the dirt anything in this engine and when the engine starts it's going to have oil pressure immediately this will also pre-fill the oil filter and like i said it'll have oil pressure right away and fuel pressure right away this engine should start immediately without any problems now once i've put about 40 quarts which is about 10 gallons into this engine we'll be ready to start it now if you don't have an oil pressure system you can buy one of these solvent guns they'll hold over 100 psi of pressure you can put about a quart of oil in them and then all you have to do is make a fitting that would actually plumb into the main oil gallery and you'd be able to force about a quart of oil pressure into the system without starting it it's just a good idea if you don't have a pump so here we have the engine the next day you can see i have thoroughly cleaned and painted and zip tied and put on all the tubes on everything i don't let my engines leave without looking like they've actually been rebuilt now the first few rebuilds I did when I was starting out, you know, most of the guys, they never primed anything. Basically, they would spin fuel filters on, maybe give the hand priming pump a few pumps, and just pre-fill the oil filter. And sometimes that's all you can do if you don't have the appropriate tools. Is it going to hurt anything by doing that? Well, you can, especially with the injectors, running them dry, either by running them out of fuel or not pre-filling or priming the system, can actually take life out of the injectors, which you definitely don't want to do on some new injectors. And bearings, while they are properly lubricated, you'll probably be okay in this instance. It is nice to have oil pressure right away. So this engine had sat for two 
weeks as I was rebuilding it. And it has a new head, new injectors, new bearings, everything. For it to start like that, like it just got shut off five minutes before and just restarted, it, it's amazing. But that's how you can do it if you prime all the systems. Now here's a screenshot I recorded of cranking. So what mostly we're gonna watch is oil pressure. So once it starts to crank, watch how quickly the oil pressure builds in the engine. Look at that, basically instantly. Within a second of it cranking and starting, we have oil pressure, which of course is great. You're gonna be protecting those metal surfaces as fast as possible. And that's really what you want. You don't want any, especially when you have new metal components mating to each other, you don't want them to be potentially wearing against each other on new parts. You want these parts to be lubricated as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Same goes with the injectors and the fuel. I hope this video was interesting for you guys, and I just wanted to show you that you can prime these systems to run appropriately and to start right away, and it's a good idea if you're doing a rebuild, major repair, or if the engine's been sitting for a long time. And thanks for watching.